Hey there, today we're making a force field like shader uh, that looks a little something like this. In game it will also uh, be animated. It works best on round objects, but you can use it on other geometry as well if you really wanted to. Let's get into an empty project and get to making this thing. All right, we're here in a new empty Unity project. If you want to play around with this project and get the shader that way, there is a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can get all my project files from all my tutorials. But for now, I'm working in the HDRP render pipeline, uh, but this should also work perfectly fine in URP, all the same. So we're going to get started by creating a new shader graph for HDRP, and it's going to be a lit shader graph, and we'll call this force field. Let's open that up. And firstly, the most important thing that we have to change here, the surface type is going to go from opaque to being transparent, because we want to be able to see through, well, most of it, actually. And the way we get that little edge that we saw before is actually very simple. There's a node that specifically does that, and that's the Fresnel effect. So if we plug that into the alpha, we'll be able to see in the material preview here, that suddenly this thing is a little bit see-through. And when we increase the power, we can see that the middle becomes more and more see-through. And we, at some point, are only left with the edge itself. And that's the kind of bubble-like feeling that we're going for. And this by itself is the basic idea behind this technique. So from here on out, we're only going to make things look a little bit better. And the way we do that, as usual with anything procedural, is we add noise textures. Uh, we can go for a gradient noise or a simple noise. It doesn't really matter too much here. So let's go for the gradient noise. Why not? And maybe we want to increase the scale on that a little bit. Not too much, but about 14 seems right. And we want to make this scroll. So we need to put something in the UVs here. And there's a tiling and offset node specifically for that. So we can put that into there. And then the offsets is what we're going to be changing. So what we're going to do is we'll get a time node. And that time node is just going to go into the offsets. Now we can see the image is infinitely, or well, rather the noise, is infinitely scrolling to the bottom left. It's a little bit too fast though. So let's actually go through a multiply node before that. Now it's faster, but if we put this at 0.5, it's slower, maybe even 0.3. That's about a proper speed. You can even make a parameter for that. So we can just make a float, call it scroll speed and plug that into there and the default value will be one personally if you're going to use a parameter like that i like to make the input here a little bit smaller so what we'll do is before going into this multiplication we first multiply it by 0 0.3 and then we multiply it by our parameter that way we have a little bit finer control over what kind of look we want now Coming off this multiply, we can actually negate that. And negate just means turn it into a negative number. And we'll copy over the tiling and offset node. Our new negated version is going to go into the offset. If we copy over our gradient noise, now we have two noises going in opposite directions. It is preferable that these don't have the exact same scale, just to add even a little bit more randomness. And if we then multiply these two with each other, we're able to see that this creates a wavy noise pattern effect. We can then multiply that with the Fresnel output, and that creates the wavy edges that we saw on the force field before. So now putting that into the alpha, it's a pretty subtle effect, especially with the color being so gray as this. So Let's change that up as well, shall we? Let's actually make the color entirely black. That might not seem like it's going to help a lot, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a parameter for the color, and we'll just call that color. That's fine. Selecting that, we're going to change its mode from default to being HDR. That way we can go past the full white exposure. So let's by default make this like a light blue, 
and increase the intensity a little bit. And we're going to put that into the emission slot instead. And now we can say that is our force field. Now, one more parameter that we might want to make is our power here. And that's the thing that goes into our Fresnel effect, which influences how close to the edge the effect exists. So, as you remember, by default, that was one. And that is a very strong effect that pretty much doesn't take out too much of the middle. So we set it to something like five, I believe. But having this as a parameter means that on an individual material basis, we can change it depending on the specific objects that might be bigger or smaller, or maybe you just want a slightly different look. Making your shaders uh, be more and more reusable is just a good idea in general. So we can save this asset now. And if we go back into our scene here, we can, with that, create a new material. And let's call this force field material. And in the shader, we can search for our force field shader that we have made. And we can now put this on a, again, you probably want to use this on a sphere, something as round as possible. Because that is what Fresnel effects work the best on. So let's put this force field effect on there. And then let's make this one red instead. Increase the intensity a little bit. And you might be able to see that this doesn't work. And there's a little bit of a weird quirk with um, shaders that are transparent. Because oftentimes when you make a material out of them, they automatically get set back to opaque. So you'll want to manually set them back to transparent afterwards. So there's two things that you might notice about this material now. Number one, the non-visible parts are still reflecting light, which is not what we want. And number two, this doesn't seem to be giving off a hell of a lot of light. Well, first and foremost, we can set the smoothness from being 0.5 to being zero. That way it will not reflect any light whatsoever. And for the second, it is important that you don't get your color all the way to the right on this square, because when it's 100% saturated, it gets a little bit iffy with being able to go over exposure. So you set it back a little bit to the left here, and then you can just go absolutely crazy with whatever value you want to give this manually. The slider only goes up to like 10, I believe, or something like that, usually, but you can definitely go over that amount. And then we can increase the power, and now the effect only exists on the edges. So now if we put this in front of our camera, uh, wherever it is, and we play the game, we'll be able to see the movement of the noise as well, and that makes a pretty perfect force field, and you can use this for a lot of different things, really. We can increase the speed if we wanted to, make it a little bit more chaotic, we can even set the speed to being zero, if we don't want any movement at all. Whatever floats your boat, it's entirely customizable to your liking. Decrease the power a little bit, make the edges show up just a tiny little bit more, and so on and so forth. And because we're working with a transparent material, uh, turning on double-sided is a option that you also can do, because by default, all the back faces aren't being shown at all, because that's just how Unity and most game engines render geometry. But we can turn on double-sided, that way it will also render the back faces, it'll take a moment to calculate that. But you can see there is a significant difference in the way that looks. So again, if you want this project file, it's relatively simple, but it's a very nice effect to be able to use, especially in combination with other effects. There's a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can download this project file, but it should be easy enough to recreate based on the tutorial anyway. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.